it seems that for months now, we've been waiting for the proverbial shoe to drop in the housing market. I mean, despite forecasts of crashing prices and rising foreclosures and no buyers due to high mortgage rates, the housing market has actually remained fairly resilient. And there's still no signs anywhere in the data to indicate any sort of trouble in the months ahead, even with increasing talk of a recession. So in this real estate market update for May, I want to share the latest information with you on home prices, talk about inventory, and the impact that inventory is having on home prices, and then also get into what a recession would mean for the housing market. We're going to close it out by taking a closer look at the actual numbers for Frisco and Prosper. So we're going to dive into that right now. Hi, this is Andrew with the Andrew Smith team of EXP Realty here in Frisco, Texas. We're going to start off today with home prices. So not so long ago, it seems that headlines about home price declines were everywhere. I mean, last fall, the real estate market slowed substantially, ground virtually to a halt on the back of mortgage rates that exceeded 7%. And that slowdown in activity caused many of the experts to predict that home prices in 2023 would fall by up to 25%. And home prices did fall, and they started 2023 falling more in many markets. But by March, home prices had actually started rising again. And here's what Andy Walden, he's the VP of Enterprise Research for Black Knight, had to say. Just five months ago, prices were declining on a seasonally adjusted month-over-month -month basis in 92% of all major U.S. markets. Fast forward to March, and the situation has done a literal 180, with prices now rising in 92% of the markets from February. So that's a pronounced change in a short period of time that was unexpected. And it's caused many of the forecasters to start to revise their projections on what national home prices are gonna do for the rest of 2023. Here's what Fannie Mae did recently. Just as early as March, they were forecasting that home prices in 2023 would decline on average of 4.2%. By April, they'd revise that to a decline of 1.2%. And I wouldn't be surprised if they decline or they revise that forecast in the positive again in the next month or so. So why aren't home price declines taking place? And it comes down to inventory simple supply and demand. And I'd love to overcomplicate it. And there's a lot of different opinions out there, but it honestly has to do more with supply and demand and inventory than anything else. We are in a supply constrained market right now, and it's driving everything that's going on in all of the major areas. So although rising mortgage rates cause the total number of home buyers to decline, there still isn't enough inventory supply to satisfy the demand of the buyers that remain in the market, especially here in Frisco and Prosper. Now, as a result of that, depending upon where you live, you're going to see that home prices are actually holding steady or increasing slightly, which kind of reiterates the point that Andy made in his quote just a moment ago. And when you think about it, the idea when buyer demand started to fall was that inventory would build as demand fell, causing home prices to come down. But that's not actually what happened. When you consider that the majority of outstanding mortgages are at or below 4%, homeowners are unwilling to trade in that low mortgage for a new one at 6.5%. So many of those homeowners just simply chose not to sell or they took equity out of their existing home in order to buy a new one, and they turn that existing property into a cash-flowing rental. Either way, it brought down the total number of homes for sale, constricting inventory even further. If there's not many homeowners putting their homes up for sale, where's the inventory going to come from besides new construction? How about foreclosures? So 
Ever since the onset of the pandemic, we've been hearing talk about a wave of foreclosures that are in the pipeline. And headlines from just as recently as a month ago are talking about the increase in foreclosure filings that may have you thinking that that wave is getting closer. In fact, here's a few of those headlines that I saw just recently. More Americans are losing their homes as foreclosure odds on U.S. properties rise. Foreclosures are on the rise. U.S. foreclosure filings jumped 22% and repossessions hit highest level in three years. Foreclosures jump is another wave about to flood the housing market. Now, honestly, the headlines are factually correct, but they aren't telling the whole story. It's important to remember that foreclosures are a part of every single real estate market, good and bad. So with that in mind, I just want to provide you a little bit of perspective by showing you a graph that looks at total foreclosure activity every quarter going all the way back to 2005. So here you can see that at the beginning of Q1 2005, there were about 130,000 foreclosure filings, and then that ramped up rapidly. We got to a point where there was over 900,000 foreclosure filings taking place. But when you look to the far right side of the graph, even though foreclosure activity picked up, they're talking about foreclosure repossessions being the highest they have been in three years. Well, that's during COVID. Moratoriums were in place that didn't allow foreclosures. When you actually look at the numbers on the far right side, you can see that it's pretty flat overall. And although the foreclosure activity is up, the actual number of repossessions taking place from a historical standpoint are near record lows. Why is that? And it's because the vast majority of homeowners are equity rich. So nearly 68% of all homes in the country have a minimum of 50% equity. Here's a chart kind of breaking that down for you. So as you can see here, nearly 39% of all homes in the United States are free and clear. There is no mortgage. An additional nearly 29% have a mortgage balance less than 50% of the home's value. With the only 32% having a mortgage with less than 50% equity. So what does this mean in practical terms? It means that even if someone found themselves in, in a financial difficulty, in trouble, and they couldn't afford to keep the home, rather than be foreclosed on, the vast majority of people would be able to list the home for sale as a traditional sale, pay off the mortgage, and still have money in their pocket to move on. So let's turn our attention to a recession for a minute here. And you know, with speculation about a recession has been with us and growing for the past few months, as a matter of fact, even in their latest meeting, the Fed acknowledged that a mild recession is likely and it will probably occur later this year. Here's actually a quote from the Fed meeting summary. It says, given their assessment of the potential economic effects of the recent banking sector developments, the staff's projection at the time of the March meeting included a mild recession starting later this year with a recovery over the subsequent two years. So assuming that a mild recession or a recession of some sort does take place, how is that likely to impact the housing market? Well, you might think that if there's a recession, it's going to be all bad news for housing, and it's probably going to cause home prices to fall. Or maybe you hope that it will cause home prices to fall. But that's not what history shows us. Here's a chart showing what happened to home prices during the last six recessions. And you can see in all of them except two, home prices actually increased. So the exception to the rule here were being a small price decline in 1991, and then the large drop in prices that took place during the housing crash of 2008. That is the one that people remember the most. It's the most recent. So therefore, that's why so many things are always being compared to what happened then. And the truth about recessions is that the housing market is usually what helps bring the country out of a recession. And one of the reasons for that is mortgage rates typically fall during recessions. Okay? That encourages economic activity. As those rates fall, more buyers have a tendency to enter the market. 
So if we go back and look at the last six recessions again, but we look at it from the perspective of mortgage rates, here's how mortgage rates started and ended with, with regard to the change in their rate over the past six recessions. So you can see a low of 0.63% in 2001, all the way up to 5% decline in mortgage rates during the recession of 1981. With that in mind, I want to turn my attention to our local housing markets and run over just a few things with you now. All right, so the screen that you're looking at right here, this is from my Frisco, Texas market report. And there's just a few things I want to point out on here. So the market action index is like a speedometer, it goes from zero to 100. And it's a great thermometer, a gauge. It's showing the balance between supply and demand. The higher the number is here, the more in favor sellers the market is, meaning there's more demand relative to the amount of supply. So right now we have cooled slightly. And all I mean by cool is that this has been going up quite rapidly over the past couple of months. And right now we're hovering the exact same as we were just a month ago. Now, a lot of the times when I talk pricing, we look at what's happened in closed sales prices. And closed sales prices are a great way to understand what the market was doing in the rear view mirror past, right? So when you look at, you know, you've got closed sales for April, those closed sales for April, those properties were probably listed in December, January, maybe the early part of February. They sat on the market 30 to 45 days. They go under contract and then they close. So that's kind of giving us an idea of what the market was back then. In this report here, I'm actually looking at the median list price. I'm also going to look at the inventory number. And I'm also going to talk briefly about the percentage of homes with a price decrease. Those items there allow us, they're more leading indicators. They kind of show us the direction that the market is going. So as I scroll down here, this is the median list price in Frisco currently. And when we go back here, this is in the latter part of the year where it dropped last year. And then we actually held steady moving into the beginning of this year. And over the last month or so, the median list price in Frisco has been going up. It's been increasing, which is an indication of a little bit of a stronger market. Okay, so if I change this here, I'm next going to look at inventory. So why is the median list price going up? Well, it's inventory. Okay, so we can see here that beginning in September of last year, inventory has been falling every single week. It's only recently that we saw a minor increase in inventory. If you go back to previous years, this is December of 2018, you can see in the first few months of the year, inventory usually swings up quite substantially. That hasn't happened this year. That's what I mean by a supply constrained market. We just don't have the supply that we would normally expect to see this time of the year. As a matter of fact, if I scroll down and look at the market segments, what this section of the report's telling us is if we take all of the homes for sale in Frisco and we divide those into four equal categories, that gives us a median price and home spec for each category. Look at the days on market. They vary between 10 and 21 across all segments of the market. The market here is moving incredibly quickly right now and not necessarily what you would expect considering many of the headlines that are out there. And lastly for Frisco here, I'm gonna take a look at the homes with price decreases. The reason the price decrease is important and allows us to look forward is if homeowners are having to cut their price before a property goes under contract, it's an indication of weakening buyer demand compared to where they were. If, if homeowners are not having to cut their price, it's an indication that demand is still fairly strong. So again, if we go back pre-pandemic, you can see that in Frisco, anywhere between 40 and 60% price reductions at any given time was fairly normal, except for during the pandemic and, and last year. But you can see as the market slowed June of last year, the price reductions jumped up substantially. They got as high as nearly 61% in December. But since that time, they've been falling. Currently sits at 29, say 30%. So the number of homes having to take a price reduction before going under contract 
continues to fall. When you couple that with the fact that median list prices are starting to increase, those things coincide together, and it kind of gives us an indication of where things are heading. So I'm going to jump over to Prosper quickly and show you what's happening there. So even though Prosper is actually right next door, you can see that there can be quite big differences between our local markets. Remember that the, the speedometer, the market action index for Frisco was 67. In Prosper, it's 41 which is actually just a slight increase over last month of 40. But it's telling us that the, the balance between supply and demand in Prosper is closer to being balanced, if you like, than it is in Frisco. The, the market is not favoring sellers in Prosper quite as much as it is in Frisco. And I'll show you why in just a second. But just like Frisco, if we look at the median list price, one of the big differences in Prosper is you can see that their median list price fell into December. And rather than Frisco, which started the year relatively flat and started climbing again in the last three weeks, Prosper has been climbing the entire year, just about, except for the last couple of weeks, they've started to flatten out in Prosper. And the reason for that is inventory. So as you can see here, the inventory in, Fris in Prosper, rather, has been increasing much more rapidly than it has in Frisco. As a matter of fact, as of right here, you're looking at the number of homes for sale in Prosper is 218. There were only 200 in Frisco. So when you consider the size differences between Frisco and Prosper, Prosper actually has more homes for sale than Frisco does. So when you look at it in that term, you can kind of get an indication as to why the market in Prosper is starting to flatten out. Their inventory has risen to the point where they're a little bit more in balance for that market than the Frisco market is. And quickly taking a look here at the price decreases, very, very similar. There's no indication of a problem in Prosper whatsoever, but you can see that the number of price decreases is not necessarily falling the same. The end of this curve right here is starting to flatten out and starting to turn this way which again is another indication of balance in that market right there. So those are the leading indicators that are showing me what is likely to happen in the months ahead. And with that in mind, neither Frisco or Prosper has anything in the data right now to indicate that there's trouble ahead or that we should expect big price declines ahead. As a matter of fact, what we are going to start to see before too long is we're going to start to see the year-over-year -year appreciation numbers show that prices are increasing again from a year-over-year -year basis. But don't let that fool you. Prices are not necessarily increasing. Prices in both areas right now are holding fairly steady. And if they're increasing right now, it's just slightly. However, prices last year, starting in April and May, is when they really started their decline. So as we're holding steady this year, when we compare those to the declining prices of last year, it's going to give the appearance of year over year gains, which might make you think that prices are starting to increase rapidly again this year. That is not the case. It just means that prices are holding steady currently. And that difference between pricing this year and last year is simply due to the fact that prices were declining at this time last year. So a little bit longer than I intended to today, but hopefully it gives you the information that you're looking for. As always, if you have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to reach out. There are links to these reports in the description below this video. And as always, you can shoot me an email at andrew at the andrewsmithteam.com or feel free to give me a call at 469-296-5230.